What is going on, everybody? So I wasn't initially going to make another video this week, but there's been a problem with a specific title on the ROG Ally, and nobody's really found an actual solution to this. I've searched an entire day for some kind of solution, and the most anybody could provide for this specific problem was basically in the territory of good luck. This doesn't happen to me. I don't know what to do. So I took it upon myself to try to fix the Halo Master Chief controller issue on the RG Ally. And if this is happening with another game, I'll be very surprised. It seems like the Halo Master Chief Collection on the RG Ally is the only game that has this issue with the RG Ally controller. And that specific issue is the fact that when in gamepad controller mode on the RG Ally in the command center, while playing any campaign in the Master Chief Collection, your controller would just randomly stop inputting anything after around 20 seconds to a minute. All of a sudden, the inputs would would just stop and Master Chief would just look at the enemy like he's gone brain dead or something. And that's really annoying because if you're in the middle of firefights, you'll start to notice this. If you just walk into some kind of end goal area or a long road, you won't exactly notice the fact that the controller's inputs just completely stop for around three seconds. And so the main way I mitigated this problem is simply to just change the control mode into desktop mode. But that can be a little complicated because you want to play the game the way you would with a gamepad. Well, I found the configuration I'm going to show you guys in this video. I'm pretty much just going to show you while I talk about it. So you're going to want to go into Armory Crate. So that's pressing the lower right button on the top of your ROG Ally controller. Go to Control Mode and Configure. Go into Desktop Mode. And the main thing I did was to try to emulate a gamepad controller. So that means that you can't make any of the triggers into mouse clicks because for some reason that would just stop your inputs for a few seconds every time you try to fire or it just wouldn't fire while you're moving. So with setting your keys on your controller, make sure that you don't duplicate any of the keys assigned to your controller buttons. So for example, I assigned the right trigger to a parentheses or just anything to the far right of the keyboard. So I know I'm not hitting it if I assign something else to the far left of the keyboard. And you'll see which symbol I assign it to specifically, as you can see here. So you're gonna wanna set your triggers to an actual key on the keyboard and not a mouse control. But of course, with the right analog stick, you're gonna wanna set that to the mouse movement. And that's gonna be set automatically because desktop mode got that covered for you. And with that input, it's not going to interfere with anything. But if you want your start and select button to act like start and select buttons, making the start button into escape would naturally make it just feel like a start button but unfortunately i couldn't find any kind of button that would have replaced the b button if it were acting like a controller so basically if you make a selection with a which i set as enter and the d-pads as the directional keys on a keyboard you would naturally get a feel as if the d-pad were just acting like a d-pad and nothing extra should show up on the screen like controller buttons or anything like that while you're selecting the d-pad because you want to set it to the directional buttons on the keyboard specifically and a to enter so it acts like the a button but the thing is I couldn't find anything to replace the B button if you want to go back in settings or if you want to just exit out go back a menu you're gonna to have to press start again if you're in one menu already so just going into settings here I'm gonna press start and there you go you're back into the previous main menu or any kind of other setting you dove deep into in order to get some kind of configuration the main thing you're going to notice is that the mouse is a bit slow while moving the mouse, it defaults to whichever sensitivity the ROG Ally gives the right analog stick as your mouse. So you're gonna wanna go into settings, configure mouse and keyboard, and just scroll down to mouse and you'll see mouse sensitivity. So I found that the sweet spot for the sensitivity for this mouse would be 4.5. 4.5 is just the right amount of speed and it feels like classic Halo. And it's pretty smooth. It's a little more sensitive than a joystick would be, but that's not exactly a bad thing. You would have to get used to it. And with the mouse controls, you're going to want to turn on mouse smoothing. And also, unfortunately, for every single title, if you want to have custom controls with your RG Ally, if it's not set to the default bindings that you see in the game, then unfortunately, you're going to have to rebind your controls for every single title. That should probably take a total of five to 10 minutes if you want to do it all in one go. But for me, I usually forget that I need to set all the bindings individually for each game. So I go into the game, totally forget what I'm doing and set the bind 
findings when I go into that particular game. But just to give you a heads up, you're going to want to set your bindings for each game, probably prior to jumping into the game. You can also adjust your zoom sensitivity and your vehicle sensitivity, but I kept those at one because they seemed unaffected by the overall mouse sensitivity. And also remember, if you want to change your key bindings to any keyboard key that you want, you're going to have to go into settings, configure mouse and keyboard and configure bindings. And I'm sure you already know this. That's why I wanted to point out which keys were best for which actions. Besides those, I set the rest of the face buttons to just random keyboard keys because it doesn't seem to matter. And of course, the movement will be default to WASD. And just make sure you set your left analog stick to WASD for movement. And all of these keys shouldn't get in the way of your input and movement. And there should be visibly no input latency with the RG Allies keyboard and mouse controls for the controller. And for some reason, this issue doesn't happen when you're using just any controller via Bluetooth while docked or in tabletop mode. So any other controller will work. I tried an 8-bit do, a PlayStation 5 controller, an Xbox Series controller, an Xbox One controller. They all seem to fully support the Halo Master Chief collection. And they don't seem to have that input desertion that the RG Allies controllers have by default. I tried multiple updates for this game. I've tried disabling every individual controller driver on Windows. I've tried pretty much everything. It took me around 20 hours of research just to find that putting your controls into desktop mode is some kind of feasible solution if you can't find any other solution with your gamepad on your RG Ally. So yeah, this is mainly for people that just haven't figured that out yet. So I found this to be the easiest fix. Just saying, freak it and go straight to keyboard and mouse because there is no input stopping or deserting. So you won't get any interference while playing with a mouse and keyboard on the RG Ally. It seems like, unfortunately, the Halo Master Chief Collection is specifically a mouse and keyboard game for the RG Ally. It's unfortunate because it plays so perfect and it was working for me for quite a while when I talked about it in previous videos. But for some reason, the gamepad in controller mode just isn't working quite right and it just randomly stops, which causes a lot of unfortunate situations in legendary mode with Halo 2 specifically. And I've tried all the campaigns. For some reason, the controller mode just doesn't work. It seems like it's being interrupted by a different input as if it's reading the RG Allies controller as a keyboard anyway. So I figured maybe switching it to a keyboard and mouse would work. And I found that these controller configurations were the best. Oh, and also before I forget, if you don't think the trigger feels quite right, just go into desktop mode configuration in Armory Crate, go to trigger and on the right trigger, where it shows 50%, there's a meter right under that. You're gonna wanna select the right meter and bring it all the way left to 50%. I found that with the SMG, assault rifle, and battle rifle, that was the perfect sensitivity to get the shots quite right. Like if you just wanna use one bullet specifically with the SMG on a grunt or something like that. Because for some reason it was reacting like it would with a racing game before the latest controller driver patch. So yeah, that's the last tiny nitpick and tweak I made to the controller. Everything else is 100% and works as intended. I think the sensitivity on the left trigger should remain the same because sometimes you hit the left trigger and you don't want to throw a grenade. And fortunately, the RG Allies wide trigger scale makes it so that if you hit the left trigger by mistake, you're not exactly going to throw a grenade all the time while hitting that trigger. And I find that to be actually better than the gamepad's trigger because for the most part, they just made the trigger digital and automatic with throwing grenades. And I feel like having that at the halfway point where you just don't throw a grenade is perfect for Halo because I always throw a grenade by mistake when I freak out with a lot of enemies in legendary mode or playing online. But that's just my personal preference. If you want the left trigger to be slightly more sensitive, then set it to 50% just like the right trigger. If you want the left trigger to be slightly more sensitive like the right trigger, then set it to 50%. But make sure you take the right scale and not the left and set it to 50%. But yeah, let me know if this was helpful to you. I've been dealing with this for quite some time. I think most people just went to desktop mode controls but i figure if you're having this issue that i would show you my solution personally and if you have any more questions regarding the key bindings or anything of the sort let me know in the comments and thanks for watching good luck later